Today, we're taking a look at Jay-Z's watch collection. Jay-Z is a New York rapper who is recognized as one of the greatest to ever touch the mic. He's up there with artists such as Rakim, Nas, Kanye West, and so many other rappers that people recognize as some of the greatest in rap history. He's also right now the wealthiest rapper alive, even above Ye or Kanye West, as uh, we formerly knew him, and also Diddy. Why is Jay-Z so wealthy? It's because of Rock Nation and Tidal and so many other businesses he has outside of rap, not necessarily his music sales. And why did he surpass Kanye West in uh, net worth? That's because Kanye West lost so many partnerships due to running his mouth online and getting cancelled. And that really hurt his pockets. But Jay-Z is much more careful when it comes to his public image. Uh, I would say Jay-Z probably has the best public image of any rapper. I don't know many people who hate Jay-Z or think Jay-Z is controversial. One thing that is not controversial with Jay-Z is his watch collection because everybody knows he's great when it comes to collecting watches. And the first watch is no exception. That is the Patek Philippe Knowledge Travel Time 5991R in 18 karat rose gold with a blue dial. This watch used to be in stainless steel with a gray dial, but Patek Philippe discontinued it in favor of this one. And if I'm being honest, this one looks a lot better. It's worth about 300 grand right now. Next up is the Audemars Piguet Royal Concept Tourbillon 262230R. This one has a 44 millimeter case, which is quite large, but when you see the watch in person, it looks even bigger because of the way the case is shaped. And also the lug to lug is very wide. It's an 18 karat rose gold with a manual wound movement. Uh, that's a tourbillon, obviously, concept tourbillon. And you have the H and R that displays the crown position. So H stands for hour, uh, which means you can um, literally change the hours on the time. Uh, N stands for uh, neutral. And R is for uh, uh, rewinding the watch. This watch is worth about 300 grand also. The Sean Carter by Hublot Classic Fusion. Jay-Z does not have pieces that are bust down with aftermarket diamonds, but this is probably the only bad type piece in this collection. Uh, it was a limited edition produced for Jay-Z only, and let's be real, if Hublot says it's limited edition, it doesn't really mean much. It has a Sean, Sean Carter logo cut on the dial to look more like a skeletonized watch. It's 45 millimeter. Uh, wide but only 2.9 millimeters thick so uh, I think that's kind of disproportionate for a kind of watch like this uh, first he has the ceramic edition with 250 pieces made uh, that had a retail price of $17,900 and then there's the yellow gold one with only 100 pieces made uh, with uh, a retail price of $33,900 I hope nobody in the world paid retail for these watches and bought them on the secondary market for steep discounts. Right now, it's really hard to find these watches for sale because they're obviously in low numbers and they don't really change hands very often because nobody wants them. But the one in ceramic is worth about 10 grand and in gold about 30 grand. So I guess they didn't uh, lose value too much, but still those are asking prices, not sold prices. Audemars Piguet Royal Oak Perpetual Calendar. This is the 25829BA in a 39mm case in 18 karat yellow gold. Jay-Z said that he complimented Kanye on that watch and the next day he wore that same watch. So that really speaks a lot about Jay-Z's watch game. He's on a whole nother level. It's worth about 300 grand. But it's like Philippe Nautilus. This is a 5711-1A018 with a Tiffany blue dial and stainless steel. And people speculate that he won the first auction for $6.5 million. But right now, this watch is worth about $300,000. And it's limited to 165 pieces. Audemars Piguet Royal Concept Turbion. This is exactly the same watch we talked about at the beginning of this video. But this one has a forged carbon case instead of gold. It's the 26265 FO. 44 millimeters with a manual wound turbion movement. It's worth about 200 grand right now. It's like Philippe Grandmaster Chime. Now we're talking. This is the 6300G. It's the most complicated Patek Philippe watch ever made. It has 20 
complications. It's so complicated that one dial is not enough. You can reverse it and there's a second dial to display even more complications. It's an 18 karat rose, uh, white gold with a manual movement. And fun fact, it was the first mechanical watch with an acoustic alarm that strikes the pre-selected time and a date repeater sounding the date on demand. So you could set this watch for, let's say, next week, um, next week on the 7th of November at 3 a.m., this watch is going to sound uh, the alarm. And it's pretty crazy on a mechanical watch. That's only one of the 20 complications. But this is an ultimate statement piece. Nobody really has something that can top this in not only the rap game, but any celebrities or wealthy people. It's worth about $2.5 million. Ritual Mail RM056. This is a one-of-one one blue sapphire case watch. It was nicknamed the Blueprint because it was custom-made for uh, from Richard Mill for Jay-Z. has a tourbillon movement and it's the most expensive retail-priced Richard Mill ever. Feast your eyes. The piece unique is sapphire. Rapper's lies. I don't do satire. And guess what? This watch is not satire at $2.5 million. Richard Mill RM056. This is a really similar watch. Also, one of one in um, this is a sapphire case that's green. It's worth about $2.5 million too. Richard Mill RM035 Black Toro Americas. This was, this was named Toro after the tennis ball Rafael Nadal. It's limited to only 50 pieces. Has a small isolated movement to protect from the impacts when hitting the tennis ball. It's worth about $600,000. Uh, another Richard Mill, uh, Black Toro Americas, is the RM35, uh, also named after Rafael Nadal in 18 karat rose gold. It has a black ceramic bezel and case back. So it's like a sandwich. The bread is the ceramic and um, whatever you put in your sandwich. Me, personally, I put peanut butter. So I guess the peanut butter is the 18 karat rose gold. And it's manual wound. It has the same movement from the RM55, Bob Watson, who is a golf player. Not a tennis player. <laughs> it's worth about half a million bucks. Rolex Date 840. This is a normal watch for Jay-Z, let's say. It's a reference 228238 in 18 karat yellow gold with a champagne dial. Worth about uh, $40,000. Cartier Crash Skeleton Platinum. Reference W72000001. Has a manual wound that is of exactly the same shape as the case which is a crazy work of engineering. It's limited to only 67 pieces uh, in honor of the original Cartier Crash that was produced in 1967. So 67, 1967. It's kind of a homage to the original one. And the Cartier Crash was produced in many batches. This is one of the more recent ones. And I think it looks stunning. It's worth about $100,000. Audemars Piguet Royal Oak Open Work. It's a 15407OR in 18 karat rose gold with a double balance wheel movement. It's a watch that was really popular among rappers, but they love it fully bust down. But thankfully, Jay-Z has it original. It's worth about a quarter million bucks. Rolex Skydweller. Just first of all, before we talk about the watch, just look at this chain. Could you imagine walking around with this? This is the reference. 326938 in 18 karat yellow gold with a champagne dial. And it's the old model because it has the Arabic numerals and the white inner circle, uh, whereas the new models have uh, the circle inside that displays the second time zone. That's uh, exactly the same color as the dial. It's worth about 45 grand right now. Patek Philippe World Time. This is the 5575G. It's the 175th anniversary edition of Patek Philippe. It's in 18 karat white gold. It has 24 time zones. This watch right now is worth about 150 grand. Audemars Piguet Royal Oak Perpetual Calendar. It's the reference 26585CE with a skeletonized perpetual calendar movement, which is crazy. And it's in black ceramic. It's worth about half a million bucks right now. Rolex Date 840. It's the 228239 in 18 karat white gold with a blue dial. It's worth about 45 grand right now. Richard Mill RM1102. This one has a flyback chronograph, GMT, and date function. 
It's an 18 karat rose gold. It's worth about $300,000. Richard Mill RM27 Rafael Nadal. This one is limited to only 50 pieces, has a titanium case, and an isolated tourbillon movement to protect, obviously, from the impacts. Uh, Jay-Z seems like a pretty big Rafael Nadal fan. It's worth about $1.5 million, so quite a bit more than the other ones. Audemars Piguet Quantième Perpetual. It's a reference to 6657 BC. It's a perpetual calendar, obviously. It's an 18 karat white gold. It's a vintage wash, so I couldn't really find out the proper reference number. It might not be that accurate, depending on the year, but uh, it looks pretty similar. It's worth about 50 grand. It's like Philippe Nautilus Chronograph. It's the 5980-1A in stainless steel. This watch is discontinued right now. They only do it in rose gold. It's worth about 120 grand. Jaeger Le Coultre Grand Reverso. This is the Ultra Thin Tribute 1931 edition. It has an image of the Carnegie Hall engraved on the other side of the watch. It's an 18 karat rose gold. It has a reversible case. It was made for pole players so that they could protect the watch by flipping it over. It's worth about 20 grand right now. Rolex Date 840. This one is 228206 in platinum with the ice blue dial and the Arabic numerals. The one with the Arabic numerals is much more rare than the one with the Roman numerals or simply the stick dial. That's why it's worth $150,000. Rolex Daytona. 116505 in 18 karat rose gold with a chocolate dial. It was used as invites for a party. I wish I got that kind of watch when I got invited to parties. But that's how crazy Jay-Z's lifestyle is. It's worth about 55 grand. Rolex Daytona. It's the 116500 in stainless steel with a panda dial. It's worth about $35,000, which is pretty cheap for Jay-Z standards. Frank Mueller Rolex Perpetual Calendar. This is an 18 karat yellow gold watch. It's a modified Rolex Datejust by Frank Mueller. Technically, this is a fake Rolex because it's not made by Rolex. And the value is really unknown. There are none for sale. It's like Philippe Nautilus. This is the reference 3800 and 18 karat yellow gold with factory diamonds. It has a 37 millimeter case. It's worth about $120,000. It's like Philippe Nautilus chronograph 5980R and 18 karat rose gold. It has a leather strap with that red chronograph hand. It's like Philippe Nautilus uh, with the leather strap are made with a red chronograph hand and they are the 5980R instead of 5981R. It's worth about 150 grand right now. It's like Philippe Aquanaut. is the 5968G001. has a sub uh, dial that displays the minutes, not the seconds. Some people may think it's a second, small seconds, but it's actually for the chronograph. Fun fact, when you adjust the strap, you need to cut it. So that's pretty bad for resale value. It's worth about $140,000. So that's it for Jay-Z's watch collection. It has a total value of $16 million, which is quite impressive. Uh, and what's even more impressive is its net worth of $1.3 billion. I'll have to rate Jay-Z's watch collection a 10 out of 10. He is the best watch collection in the world. The first watch I would recommend him is a Petsec Philippe 5990-1400G because um, he doesn't have a factory bust down piece and why not get the best of the best next up i would say vacheron constantin overseas perpetual open work so thank you guys for watching let me know in the comments what you think about jesus watch collection who should i do next and i will talk to you guys later